Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is called Recreating a 3ds Max V-Ray Metal Material in Blender. So as many of you know, I've been a 3D Studio user since the mid-90s, and was planning on staying that way until a few years back when Autodesk decided to make their software rental-only. In response, I bought the final copy of 3ds Max that I was able to own, which was Max 2022, and a month or so ago I installed it on a brand new computer. So next time I buy a new computer in, say, three to four years from now, while I will still own 3ds Max 2022, it's quite likely I won't be able to activate the software due to Autodesk's rules, and so my time with 3D Studio will come to an end. So the two paths ahead are, number one, keep this computer running for the rest of my natural life, or two, start looking elsewhere. And my plan is to pursue both, and so a part of that was to give this blender I keep hearing about a try. After learning the basics of Blender, I wanted to try and replicate some of my 3ds Max work, and so decided to start by recreating my favorite metal material. I've used variations of this metal for hundreds of projects, including the story of Ink, Testudo, and plenty of others. So this video will show off my results recreating this metal using Blender's Cycles Render Engine. So before going into Blender, this is the material that I'm trying to recreate. And now inside of 3ds Max, um, here is the material itself. So it's done in V-Ray, and uh, let me just go through briefly what the material is about. So to start off with, it's a V-Ray material, and it's got three different maps plugged into three different slots. So we have the uh, V-Ray uh, color here, then the color goes into a triplanar so that it is projected from uh, all the different angles uh, on my surface uh, with a blend. Then there's an output map here, which is just a color correction to make it darker or lighter, and then that's pumped into the diffuse slot. Then we have another uh, bitmap here, and that's going into another uh, V-Ray triplanar, and then that's being put into the bump map. And then finally we have another uh, bitmap, and this is the spec map, and that is going into the triplanar, going into again an output map so that I can do color correction and value correction, and that's being pumped into the glossiness of the metal itself. And then there's one little section down here, which I've also done, and this is an overall bump. So this bump uh, that's up here is uh, the small details bump, but we need a large bump in order to make something really look like metal, especially on flat surfaces. So let me just explain that for a second. So here's a diagram explaining what's going on. If you have a flat surface like a box, the amount of a environment that is going to be reflected on a flat surface is very minimal, as you can see in the upper left. And in the middle, you can see if you have a um, curvature on your surface, like for example a sphere, which is a nice big round ball, you get a lot more of your environment reflected on the surface, which creates far more interesting reflections. And so in order to fix the problem on flat surfaces, what you do is you put on this uh, extra bump map. And what the extra bump map does is it perturbs the surface, which then gets far more of that environment onto the surface. And so if you look down at the two cubes uh, at the bottom, the one that's on the left is the one that's reflecting with no big bump map on it. And the one that's on the right has the bump map on it. And you can see there's a lot more reflecting in there, which makes it look a lot more like real metal. So back to Max again, uh, that's what this part is down here. So you have yourself a, uh, a bitmap that is a really large low level bump, and then that's being applied using a V-Ray triplanar, and then color correction is happening to it. And then this is being put into a V-Ray color to bump, and then that's going into this thing called a V-Ray bump material. And so what that does is it takes the bump that's happening up here in this material and the layers another bump on top of there. And that's how you get the small bump mixed uh, in with the large bump in order to get uh, the best looking reflections. Okay, so let's move over to Blender. And before I show you the material, I wanna show you the environment that's reflecting. And so if you go into the um, shading area here, and then under here, instead of the object and looking at the material in the object, you can go to world, and that gives you this area here. And this is what lets you set up stuff like, for example, your background, uh, your HDR, um, and also your skylight. So um, the way I did this, uh, and this is replicating what I had in the max file, is um, here, right there, is the bitmap, which is an HDR. So that's a high dynamic range image. And then attached to that are these two nodes here. So the texture coordinates is uh, telling it where to get the, the coordinates from, like UVs or generated. 
That then gets pulled into the vector of a mapping node, and the mapping node is where you can do stuff like rotate the image, move the image, scale the image, things like that. And then the result of that gets pumped into the vector of the bitmap itself. And uh, one thing to note, um, in 3ds Max, these uh, values here are part of usually the same node as this stuff. But here you can break it out inside a Blender, which is really cool because it means that, for example, if I want to have multiple bitmaps and I want all the bitmaps to share this stuff, I can just pump this uh, into the different uh, bitmaps rather than having to manually copy this over and over again. So very flexible, which I dig. So anyway, once we have this though, if I just do this by itself and then hook this into the world output, then this will uh, be act as a skylight, which I want, and it'll also act as a, um, a reflections. But the problem is, is that you'll also see the reflections in the background. And for this case, I don't want to see the reflections in the background. I just want the reflections to show up on the metal. And so that's what the rest of this stuff does here. So um, just going through it, uh, first of all, I take this value here and uh, just for color correction purposes, I create a multiply node. I hook the color of this into the uh, first part of the multiply. And then the second one is a simple value. And so this just lets me basically make it brighter or darker really easy. If I turn this to two or three, the reflection will get uh, brighter. And then this goes into a mix. And so what this mix is doing is it's mixing between either this bitmap or the color black, depending on whether it's supposed to um, be the light or whether it's supposed to be the actual background of the image. So you can see the factor, and the factor here is the, the black and white image that uh, basically says, does it use this material, uh, sorry, does it use uh, this um, uh, set of bitmaps or does it use this color, is up here, which is a light path. And so you say, is camera ray? And so what this basically does is this says that if it's a camera array, then you want to use uh, the uh, black background. And if it's not a camera array, for example, reflections or a skylight, then you want to use this HDR image. And then once you pump that in, that's what gives you your HDR background, which um, you can see if I go to interactive rendering, it's now rendering the material, and you can see that there's the reflection in here of the, um, the, the room, which is what's inside of here. But the background here, instead of showing it, is uh, just showing black. And just as an example, let me just uh, yank this over here so you can see what the difference would be. So if I go just like this, you can see the HDR in the background as well as it being the skylight and then also um, in the reflections. But instead, if I use this, then I only see it in the reflections and I don't see it in the back. Okay, so let's move on from the environment and instead move over to the material assigned to this object. And this is the material here. And you can see inside of here, there are these colored boxes, which is a really cool thing in Blender. You basically can create any uh, box you want, any color you want, and put nodes into it, which makes it far easier to tell what's what. So for example, here you can see that this is all the color nodes, and then this is all the spec nodes. And then this is all the uh, displaced nodes, or in this case, it's doing bump maps as opposed to displacing. And then this is the mapping stuff over here. And then that gets plugged into the material. So I'm just going to go through this uh, bit by bit. And so you can see what's going on here. So to start off with, this is the mapping area. So this is all the mapping stuff. And here's a good example. You can see how this one mapping node, which I've set a uh, very specific scale to, um, is being plugged into a bunch of different nodes, uh, which is a really nice feature that, uh, that I definitely like being able to do that. So we'll go first to the color map. And just to show you what this looks like, if you grab this color and drag it out directly over here into the surface, you can see what that map looks like uh, without any of the material involved. It's just showing you the, the map on the surface. So that's what the color is for this particular surface, um, is this sort of noisy, uh, ripped up with scratches, metal sort of material. And so I take that, and uh, you'll note that I'm using a blended box map. And I did another video, which should be up at the same time, showing how to do blended box maps or triplaners inside a Blender. So feel free to check that out if you don't know it. But uh, in the meantime, um, I set it to box, set it to blend. And so this is being projected, this bitmap is being projected on the front and the side and the top, and then it blends between it so you don't see any seams on the surface. 
So then what I did was I took this and I brought it into this multiply no uh, node. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm multiplying this with a brightness value. And in this case, I'm increasing the brightness. So all this doing is that color correction, which you saw inside of 3ds Max in order to get the, uh, the, the final result. Okay, so now let's discuss the bump map. And it's in two parts. You have the small um, and the large. And so we're gonna start with the small. And we have our bitmap here, which is uh, using the triplanar. And um, it's using mapping from up here. And if I just take the color from this and pump it up into the shader, we'll see what the results are. So that's like that. So you can see there's um, scratches and things in there. And then what's happening here is a little trick. I'm not a big fan of, well, basically what I wanna do here is I wanna take this value and I wanna make um, this bitmap multiplied by a very, very small value. But if the value is really, really small, what'll happen is the value will end up being like 0. 0.00001 or something like that, which is, is annoying to edit. So um, this is a little trick, which is what I'm doing is I'm taking this value, which is 0. 0.07, multiplying it by a value of 0. 0.01, and then taking that value and multiplying that onto this particular uh, bitmap. And so you don't have to do it this way. And if you're doing something in real time and you need it to work really fast, in fact, this is not as efficient as having this number pre-computed. But for fiddling around, I've just found this to be a useful way of getting rid of having too many uh, decimal spots in the numbers that I'm tweaking. So anyway, if I take the result of this multiplied here, you'll note that the result is black but the actual result that ends up there is very close to black, but not pure black. And you'll see the results of that once I mix it in here. So then the big displacement here, this is very similar to the one um, that I showed you where we want a very a soft, but a very large displacement, just so we get more interesting reflections on the surface. So what I'll do is um, I'll just show you what the results are there. And you can see it's sort of this crinkly uh, material that's being applied with the triplanar. Um, and it's a much larger and softer bump um, that's going on. And so what I do with that is I then do a similar trick to the one up here where I multiply it down so that I have control over how strong the result is. And then I take the small bump and the large bump and I add it together using an add node here. And then I take that result and I pump that into the height of this bump node, which then goes into this metal material that I have right there into the normal. And so um, again, if you look at the result from here, you're not gonna see a whole lot, but that is what is causing the actual uh, bump to occur on the surface itself so that it's not absolutely perfectly flat. And you get these more interesting undulations in the reflections. Okay, and now we'll go to the spec, which is pretty straightforward. It's another one of these uh, modified materials that's using a triplanar. And so once again, I'll show you what this looks like. And this one um, is also similar, but has more of these little sort of speckly things. And what this does is this controls the specularity by controlling the glossiness. Um, or the uh, roughness, uh, sorry, that's what it's called in, in Blender. Glossiness is kind of the opposite of roughness. And so the idea is, is that what you're trying to do is you're trying to say, okay, um, areas that are uh, white are areas that are very rough and areas that are black are not rough. And the result is you end up getting more or less specularity and more or less reflection on the surface, which happens to metals when it's a little bit impure or has, uh, you know, a very slight dirt on top of it or something. And then these nodes in here, this color ramp and this mix, uh, this is all just color correction basically. So I'm uh, clamping the value here. Like for example, if you see this here, and then let me grab this and pump it in there, you can see that I'm making the uh, whites a lot whiter and then I'm mixing it with this value and then that's the final value that I'm using to uh, pump into the roughness to change the, the roughness on this particular material. So now let's just take a quick look at the material itself. And you'll notice I removed all of the noodles from um, the different things. So there's no maps affecting this at all. And so in this case, you can see that it's reflecting very normally the, surf, um, the, the reflection map, which is the HDR in the background. And uh, the first thing is adding the color back in. And this isn't gonna do a whole lot. 
And the reason this doesn't do a whole lot is because metal tends to be more reflective than it is a diffuse surface. So the diffuse surface here does add a little bit of difference, but not that much for metals. But I still like adding it in there, um, especially if I start reducing down the uh, reflectivity and it reveals more of uh, this material underneath. So in this particular case, um, then in the roughness, I have here the uh, spec area. So let me just pull this into roughness. And you can see this does a lot. So this roughness really pushes it where it gets blurry in spots and not as blurry in other spots, which helps give the metal that sort of worn metal feel to it. And then down here, I'll take the bump and I'll reattach the bump here to the normal. And then that adds all the, you can see like here, some of these little crinkles and, and bumps and uh, divots, which help give it a little bit more uh, of a realistic result. And then the other things to note in here is I have an IOR. IOR is how reflective the surface is, and it's pretty high because it's a metal surface, so that's set to five. And then down here, there's a bunch of uh, other features you can use, like uh, anisotropic, which is um, it stretches reflections, and I'm not using it in this particular case, but that's something else I wanted to mention, which it gets used a lot. Um, tint as well, if this was you know something more like gold as opposed to um, something more chrome like what I have here. So that is the material in a nutshell. So here's what it looks like after I do full renders. And so you'll see the one on the left is the 3ds Max version. And uh, the one on the right is the Blender version. And while it's not an absolute one-to-one, -one, it's very, very, very close. And I'm really impressed with how similar the two materials ended up using the, the two different programs. And um, so now, of course, this is just a start. So this is, I wanted to recreate the exact metal I was using, but now that I've done that, the next step would be to take the Blender material and try to make it look even better using the uh, different features that Blender has over the um, shader materials that are inside of the 3ds Max V-Ray one. Uh, but that's for another video, and I may do that uh, in the future. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video interesting, especially if you're a 3D Studio person trying out Blender for the first time. And uh, if you want more videos like this, please go to neilblevins.com and go to the Art Lesson section. And if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.